as you begin to use planner for your tasks whether you're in a team or you're just by yourself sometimes you need to send a status report additionally if you have multiple plans as you see here you need an effective way to search over those tasks and find information so today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that it's really not that tough we're going to use some power automate templates and then it's just like clockwork it'll happen every single day so stay tuned we're going to jump right to it so the first place we want to start really is here I guess within Outlook we can start there we want to create two folders here one called task archive and you may want to spell that right it looks like I have too many eyes and task search so to remember to create a folder we just say create new folder we go down here and we type it in that's it okay so and then I made it a favorite and remember to make a favorite you just click here okay so here we have the two folders that we've created and we've made them a favorite we're making them a favorite just for the video you can I usually just have task search as a favorite great so now we've created those folders great now let's go into creating that summary report so the the best way to do it is just go to your templates right here open up power automate go to your templates type in planner here and do you see here create a daily summary of planner tasks by bucket that's the one we're going to modify today there are many ways to accomplish what we're doing here I'm trying to take you on the easiest path so let's go ahead and just use one of their templates it's free it's easy to use so let's start at the top and we'll start just kind of breaking it down to see which one of these variables and that we need to adjust to make it work in our environment so again you can adjust these later we're going to take a lot of the defaults so here reoccurrence runs every day so we're going to click on that because I don't want it to run every day I don't want a summary on Saturday and Sunday for example I only want it Monday through Friday so I'm gonna click on here and then I'm gonna say I'm gonna add my time zone so that when I put the information in it is correct and so let's see here central where are you central time zone and then I'm gonna go down here on these days I'm gonna hey select all and I'm gonna say I just want Monday through Friday so now that's just going to give it to me Monday through Friday and I want it delivered I don't want it delivered at 9 a.m. I want it when I come into the office so let's run it at 4 a.m. okay and if I wanted to put in a specific time for example 30 minutes I would just type in 30 here so let's go ahead and do that so now you can see it runs every Monday through Friday at 4 30 a.m. now let's continue to edit this so some of these we're not going to touch so this one we're good to go so when we get done let's close those so we know what we've done here this is a task details we're going to leave it as is but you can change this in the future but let's just leave that as is for right now we're going to go ahead and click there and then these task arrays we're just going to leave these arrays just as they are so let's just not bother with those we can adjust those later if we choose to but let's not bother with them now now we're going to pick which plan and we're just going to say we want to go to the personal plan so you're going to have to repeat this step this excuse me you're going to have to repeat this for every single plan that you want into your search area so we're just going to hit personal for now and i'm going to show you later in the video of how to duplicate this for the other plans now here we're just going to say um we're going to list out those tasks from personal so that's good now we're going to iterate through each one of these variables so we're just capturing we're going to leave that as is now notice here we're going to go through and collect just as long as the id there's an id for a task and it's in a bucket okay so so we're good there we can add other parameters here and we'll talk about that later in the video as well and then you see here if yes so we're going to go ahead and and go down to that condition statement and say okay so we want to see title start date stop date value okay we don't want to modify this we're just going to leave it the same we could modify it but we want to see something different but we don't so we're just going to 
leave it the same way okay and then we're going to say here create the um, HTML table whoops and we're just going to say tasks now we don't need to do anything we're going to keep this to automatic we could if we wanted to we could go in here and select custom and then we could say which value we're going to have on which header so we could customize that we're not going to do that see other videos i have on doing that customization of the html table then we're going to reset the task basically we're going to empty the the uh, array and then we're going to append here and so we're good to go so now all we need to do is we're going to put in an, an email address because we're going to send this as an email and we're going to send it right there to technology milestones and here we're going to put planner task but instead we're going to do it a little bit differently we're going to put in task list and i'm going to show you why in just a moment and hyphen and then we're going to put personal okay so now we're sending this to our personal email here now if we had other people we would include them as well here's the body of the text that we're going to send we can adjust this html but we're not going to at this point we're just going to send it as is because we want to keep this as simple as possible and now we're going to test this so we're going to go up and we're going to hit save and we're going to hit test so let's go ahead and test say go test and run flow now what we're going to do here hopefully in just a minute is we're going to see that report come through we can see it's going to knock its way through now remember the more tasks you have the longer it's going to take to go through all of this so it's important just to realize that it's going to take some time so be patient uh, i have some that take up to an hour where i have thousands of tasks so you just have to be a little patient and once this gets done we're going to go over here to our mail and we're going to see it come in into the inbox and and we're going to talk about how to move that to another location as well all right so whoops a daisy click keep clicking on the wrong tabs here all right so it's still processing so we'll come back here i'm going to pause the video we're going to come back once this is done all right, so the flow has run successfully, as you can see. It took about seven minutes or so. So you're just going to have to kind of realize that these things do take time. And then let's look at the email itself. So here, the email message comes through. And this is what we've taken. See the, bu the bucket here, task list, personal. And then we see all of the tasks. Now, we see everything that are due excuse me they're completed and not completed we could put a filter in here if we chose to to add a to add a um, completed to only show non completed tasks and we'll go through that in another video so let's go ahead and go back over to the outlook now that we have the task here within our inbox notice it's not in our task search box so let's go ahead and fix that problem to do that we're just going to do a right click on that message and go to advanced and create a rule and we're going to say more options here and discard so we're going to just create this rule as a new rule so let's go ahead and do that and we're going to say here task list to task search easy enough we're going to add a condition so the condition says that when the let's see here subject right here includes and we're going to put in task list then we're going to go ahead and move that over to a new folder task search and then we're going to hit run that now and we're going to hit save and while that runs what we're going to be doing is you can see here that it'll run and it's kind of looking down through the inbox for everything and i think it's already moved it but let's Let's see what happens there. It'll just take a second to do this. When it's completed, you'll see here that the turns into an arrow so you can play that again. So let's go ahead and take a look, see if it worked. Task list to task search. Let's go ahead and hit close. Now, notice that that email is gone. Let's go to task search. And sure enough, that email is right there. So what's going to happen every time we create one of these scripts 
to capture all of our tasks, it's going to automatically come into our inbox and then push over here to task search. And I'll show you why that's important in just a minute. So here we had success running this bad boy. We're going to name, rename this file though here. And we're going to say here, summary report for personal. And that's what we're going to name that. And there, there's a method to the madness here on renaming. So just kind of follow me through, follow with me uh, as I explain it. Let's go back here and we're going to go there. And here we have it right there, summary report. Now we want to create another one. And let's do one for tasks. And there is no task in here. So let's just put one in here called Mickey Mouse. And let's go ahead and assign that task to me and we'll make it do today. Okay. And we'll hit close. So now let's go ahead and see how to automate this. So we're going to say right here, we're going to go, we've already developed the power automate script. So it, it works. So let's just go ahead and save that. So right click, save as, and then we're just going to take this out right here and we're going to go here. We're going to say, um, I think it was tasks and hit save. Now it's going to create a copy of this flow for us. Notice it's kind of dithered out there. We're going to say, turn it on. And then we're going to hit right here, edit. Now we can leave all of this alone. We could change this if we wanted to the time, but let's just let it run at the same time. And we're going to leave everything alone except for here. And then we're going to go down here to where list buckets and we're going to say tasks right there. And then we're going to list the tap list, the tasks from the tasks, um, plan. And then you see right there, tasks and tasks. We're going to leave this alone. And then we're going to say, send an email. We want to send it to the same person, but here we're going to just double click on personal and we're going to put in tasks. That's all pretty simple. We're going to hit save and then we're going to hit test and we're going to hit manual. Now this will probably create two, but that's okay. We'll just go through this. Hit go. We'll watch the task run. Of course, everything's going to run fine. There's only one task in there, so it should be relatively quick. It was just a couple seconds. Now let's go over to our mail client and see if everything worked out for us. And sure enough, there you go. There's the next one. Now, why is this important? Well, if I have a task embedded, let's say I created a task and we've talked about this on other videos. Let's say I created a task with a unique ID, right? I could search on that ID if I knew what it was, but let's just say I know what the task is. Let's just say it's Mickey Mouse. When I hit search, it's going to come up. It's going to search inside of my task search folder and it's going to find it right there in that list. So now I can say, oh, okay, well, that one was pretty easy, right? So I can say, great, it's in this bucket in this plan. If this is the only plan that comes up, which it is, I could just go to tasks and I could say Mickey Mouse here and it would come up with the task. So I can quickly and easily search over literally hundreds of plans and find information quickly. This will help dramatically reduce the number of tasks, uh, duplicate tasks that you create within your environment. One last trick before we go. Now we see that everything's loading here into our search. We're going to cancel that search out right there. And notice here that I clicked, I'm in this area is where I'm searching, right? Inside of task search. So here I have the two great, everything looks great, but I need to put them into archive. I need to be able to move those into task archive because at the beginning of each day, I want the most current task lists. I don't want them from yesterday because tasks change literally every day. And if you're running a large environment, you're going to be changing hundreds of tasks in a day and you don't want to figure out how that all works. So let's go ahead and create a move command for moving the tasks from inside this folder in Outlook over to this folder in Outlook. So to do that, we're going to use 
um, we're going to use Power Automate. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new task and what we're going to name this task is Move Tasks. And remember to create a task, let's open this up in a new tab so you can kind of follow along where I am. So we're just going to say right here Scheduled Task and we're going to name it what we named this which is Move Tasks and then we're going to tell it to do it um, once a week, excuse me, Monday through Friday. So we're going to go here to week, we're going to hit go and then hit create. Okay. But I've already done that. I'm right here. Notice I've adjusted the time to 2100 and I've added central standard time and Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Got it. So that's the reoccurrence. That's when it's going to occur. The next thing we're going to add and remember we to add, we just click add action and type in get emails. Now, what we want to do is search for, we want to select the folder. So if we go here, we can select task search, and then we're going to change this to no. By default, this is yes, but we want to fetch all messages. And then here, this is set by default to 10. We want to increase that to 25. And then these boxes, we're just going to leave alone. Now, we're going to add move email so maybe it'd be easier if i did this like this let's just do away with that one let's say we're going to move email so you can kind of see how it works we're going to hit move email and what we want to do is we want to go click in here and we want to say message id right there and when we do that it's going to create this loop that says okay i want to look at everything every single thing in there I want to find the message ID and then I want to move it to this specific folder, which happens to be archive. So it's going to go through one message at a time and move them over. We've got this saved. We're just going to hit save here and then we're going to go ahead and test it. Although before we test it, let's see and make sure everything moves over right. Notice we have one red, one not red right here in task search and notice we have nothing in task archive we had two eyes in there so all right so let's go ahead and go back over here and we're going to go ahead and run the test so let's hit test manual test run flow and hit done and it ran successfully very quick and then we're going to go over here notice here there's nothing left in task search and now task archive has both those and again we can search just like we did before for Mickey Mouse, we find it. We can go down and find it. We can do one other test here. Go back, task archive. Let's say, um, what do we got here? Personal. We want to search for this number here. Let's see how that does right there. Copy. And then we're going to search for that number. Hit go. Sure enough, there it is. It highlights it. And if there were multiple ones, the nice thing is, you can search down through so you can kind of use your mouse roller and search let's do this one that's way down at the bottom here all right we're going to take that out we're going to hit that hit go again now i don't know where it is right because i've got lots of tasks i'm just using the scroll bar on my mouse to quickly scroll down there it is right there i know that it's in the follow-up bucket so a lot of times when i use this search i just want to know what plan it's in and then i search within the plan but that's how you set up a full search capability within Planner, taking all of that data automatically. Everything you've seen here is automatic. At the end of the day, um, it will move everything from your search into your archives. So that when you wake up and start work the next day, you're going to have a fresh new list of tasks to search by.